Great. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Christopher. Uh, I do some different things. Uh, right now, I'm actually mostly working with uh, kids' toys, with QuirkBot. Uh, and that is basically my, my day job or something like that, making small robot toys for kids to learn them, to teach them how to build robots and stuff like that. Uh, but I also have uh, a lot of other things that I've been doing like historically and that I'm doing sort of on my free time. Uh, and that is a bunch of stuff relating to musical instruments. And I guess that's why I'm here today, to talk about uh, musical instruments or electronic musical instruments. Uh, so basically from the beginning I'm like a, I don't know, media artist, something like that. I have a Master of Fine Art in Media Art thing. Uh, and I learned to program and do stuff like that in art school. Uh, I'm also a chaos pilot, which is a kind of other weird education. So uh, today I'm going to talk about two things only. Uh, they actually asked for a very hands-on talk. So. Uh, First, I'm going to talk about a little bit of theory or whatever and show some stuff that I've been doing. Uh, and the theory is like one thing that I found find really, really interesting about electronic musical instruments in general. And the other thing I'm going to do is to show uh, what I did this weekend. I did this thing this weekend. And uh, maybe it's not super interesting in itself, but um, yeah, I can explain more why, why I think it's, it's fun and interesting. So, yeah, oh, sorry. You can show it like this. Uh, that's nice. It's a phone and a thing. Yeah, it's a little teaser, and here's the volume. Do we get to see on the inside? Uh, oh, yeah, let's see. see on the inside. The inside is quite boring. No, it's, it's like, that's nice. Okay, okay, enough, right. enough of okay. that, enough of that. <laughs> Well, electronic musical instruments versus an acoustic musical instrument. An acoustical musical instrument is basically a piece of matter that you get to vibrate in different ways. That is every musical instrument ever. And you get it to vibrate by blowing on it or hitting it or grinding it or uh, making a really, really complex thing uh, that have a lot of vibrating parts. Electronic musical instruments as you can see on the picture here, are completely different. Because <laughs> they are actually uh, a synthesis thing, what, what Håkan was talking about, a synthesizer uh, that is connected to a controller. And those, those two things are, are separate, even though they're usually built together because it's more convenient. But as a kind of a beast, they are completely different, and that opens up uh, loads of different uh, new opportunities for um, different types of expression and, and uh, stuff like that. So yeah, here is the, here is sort of the model of an electronic uh, electronic instrument. You have a controller, which is Christopher, yeah. I'm just going to interrupt you briefly. Can you just take the mic and just squeeze it a little closer to your mouth? And to my mouth. Yes. That's better. Okay. Let's try it. So yeah. So you usually have in in oh, I see now. Better, yeah. okay, okay. So a controller is usually sensors in some type of array or something like that, and sensors is basically anything that can take something from the real world and put it into the electronic world or into the computer world, and something to generate a signal that's going to control the synthesis. And then you have some more or less intelligent manipulation of the signal, some sequencer, some, some other things. And on the, synthesi on the synthesis side, uh, there's basically too much to talk about there. There is like a fantastic world of different ways of making sound with electronics. It's just, it's just this kind of amazing thing to just pick from. Uh, so when you start looking, and then you have something to control it. So you have a signal going from there to there. And that signal doesn't have to be very close to um, the synthesis from the controller. It doesn't have to be real-time. It doesn't have to uh, 
uh, even be on the same time scale. So you can have one time scale over here, and then you can have one time scale over here. And when you start just realizing that, then it opens up some possibilities. This is why this is cool, because you have so many less physical restrictions of how to control a sound and how to play. Uh, so, and it's also extremely easy to come up with new instruments. Uh, it's basically just you make you take some kind of synthesis thing that you like, and you take some kind of controller thing that you like, and then just make different new combinations of them. Uh, also, other things than human can play. This is also fun. So. And I mean, you have seen now, actually a lot of what you are talking about is actually examples of doing these kind of uh, combinations and, and they mean something new when you make them. So it's, uh, I think like making musical instruments or whatever is uh, kind of an art form. It's something you, sh uh, you should do only for its own sake, even if it's not useful or successful. So here's some stuff that I have tried to connect like uh, together. So it's the very old one. Uh, buckets of ice water that control the sound of melting water, so you can like build your own sort of ice water universe in a room. Uh, movement of color to control like samples. Psycho, psycho, <laughs> psycho physiological signals. It's hard to say. Uh, it's basically like uh, blood pressure and uh, conductivity and the skin uh, and uh, pulse. And that can go into an algorithmic composition. Electrical cords, burp, 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 that can be a sequencer. Uh, I had data from my bed for 30 days, so I took like 96 readings, five reading, uh, 96 sensors, five readings per second, and then this control like a granular synthesis. And that was not in real time, that was sort of afterwards, so you can look at it in the gallery. Uh, a swing that has uh, things in the head and uh, in this, like motion sensors, uh, two motion sensors that control sort of a composition with like this kind of gamelan sound. So you, it controls like the uh, sort of the sonic world that you're swinging in, and you sort of swing in this <laughs> sonic thing, like augmented swinging or something. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty called skate hack, where we took where skaters are actually playing by skating on a skate ramp. So you have a lot of sensors inside of the skate ramp, and that sort of skates. A cube made of wood that we've been working on really long, me and my friend in Idiophone, Don. Uh, and that was sort of our first attempt of making an actual product, which is a cube of wood that you can hit and move in different ways to control and create, uh, call different, control different sign sounds. Uh, a project called Radioactive Orchestra, where we uh, we're, we're measuring the gamma radiation, like from the environment and also from sources, and we use this to control loads of different types of uh, synthesis, like granular and additive and stuff like that. So I have been trying out a lot of different things with with sort of just this combination. Uh, but now, because it's going to be a hands-on talk, and I have no idea how much time I have left. Um, you're pretty good. 10, 15 minutes. Good. Because uh, this weekend I did a project. Congratulations. Cool. And <laughs> <laughs> it's here. And it sounds a bit like this. I want more sound. More sound. Good. And what this is, this is basically my phone that has all the music software running on it. And here is some cheap type of sensor that is called a potentiometer. It's basically knobs and sliders. And here is, yeah. And here is an Arduino, just a standard Arduino thing. Uh, and then you basically have your own, this is my drone synthesizer. The reason, that, the reason I did this is because this kind of, uh, called Puff Synthesis. Uh, I don't know exactly what it does, but I found the code for it, and I, I love to tweak it. Uh, but I wanted to tweak it like not 
have it on my phone or on my computer because it's not so nice. I wanted to have like a thing where you can like tweak it without looking. Yeah. Uh, so that was my motivation of doing it. Yeah, sure. You can tweak it. Yeah, let's turn it on. So what I was thinking was, uh, because it's so easy to make this, I want I want to just show you exactly how I did. Is that okay? <laughs> cool. <laughs> so back to this. no, back to this. Yeah. So here we have like a, for the for the synthesis, uh, we have we have something called pure data, and we have I have a patch in pure data. I'm going to show you what pure data is, and I have a way of putting the pure data patch on my phone with something called mobmuplat, which is an interface, and then I put it on my phone. By the way, I have done nothing of this like myself, it's just tools. Uh, we have an Arduino with some very, very secret sauce made by a man sitting over there. Because <laughs> Arduinos usually don't love iPhones, or they do, but iPhones don't love Arduinos. If you plug an Arduino into an iPhone, it's like, yeah, you get a lot of pop-up screens and, and bad stuff, but I know a guy who can make <laughs> bad pop-up screens go away like no one else. <laughs> Uh, sliders and knobs, because that's lovely, and uh, it's very conventional, but that's fine. Cardboard and glue. Uh, yeah, so this is the six steps. So first I want to make my pure data patch. And this is a pure data patch. I'm going to go over here, so this is, I don't know if you can see it very well. I think maybe you can see it. This is basically, a, if you haven't seen pure data before, this is what it looks like. It's a lot of little, uh, you can, little thing that you can move around, and you can make new boxes, and type stuff into those boxes. And if you type something meaningful, the box will do something meaningful. And here you have basically <laughs> two, <laughs> two sound. <laughs> these two boxes here, they are basically the sound synthesis, and it's something you can open. You can open them up and look inside, and they look like this. Uh, this is completely stolen, by the way, what's inside of here, or borrowed, because everything is open source. Uh, so this is, <laughs> this is open source, uh, but it's patented by IRCAM. So <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to... Uh, I cannot sell it, probably. Um, so when all the boxes are connected like this, it sounds very nice. Uh, so I decided to, to take not one, but two of them. They're both the same. And then there are some things in this algorithm that you can control, and they're called different things. Fundamental and say center frequency and stuff like that. Uh, and then I put some LFOs on it because LFOs are nice. It's low frequency oscillation. It's LFOs. And then I put that into a reverb because this is a drone instrument and the most important button is the reverb. Have to. Yeah. And uh, because I want to also control it from different places, I I, uh, I make these kind of little things here. It's, it says P, and then it says some kind of thing there, and then it says 127. D they they make it possible for for the phone to talk to to it, and this called control. Uh, 33, that makes it possible for uh, the Arduino to talk to it. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, you don't need to know more than that to do this. Uh, maybe like an hour introduction to pure data and just browse around like the basic patches and like find your own thing and then you can start connecting stuff. Uh, so that's, that's like the, the whole patch. And then this actually runs on the computer pretty well, so you can like hear it on the computer and try different things out. But if you want to put it on the phone, uh, you have to put it in this system called Mobmuplat. I thought I had a screen with it somewhere. It's here. And this wonderful little, it's an app and a sort of an app builder that is also completely open source. Uh, it's based on, on something called uh, PDLib <coughs> that makes it possible to run pure data things on other places and then in pure data. Uh, and it's just a really great little thing. Uh, 
Here, you sort of just tell it what the patch is called. Like basically, you give it the name of this thing that you just did. And then here, you can make different things. So uh, like sliders and stuff like that. So yeah, and here is like a, a knob. And this knob, it has a name. If you go to prop here, you can like see, you can give it a name. You can also add like new things if you want to add a new knob. Let's take that away. But here is a knob, and you can look at the knob, and the knob has an address. And that address is the same as here. So we have fun one, which is fundamental one. And this one is called fun one. And then that one will control that one. Um, and that's basically all that's to it. And to put it on the phone, you just, I can just show you how to put it on the phone. It's pretty easy. You just go to, uh, what is this app called? iCloud, no. <laughs> 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 iTunes, sorry. <laughs> I hate iTunes. Uh, <laughs> and what you can actually do in iTunes, you can actually click on your phone and, and some of the, your phone will have apps here. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can click on apps. And here you have some apps. And there you can just put stuff on your phone. I didn't know that was possible, but it is. So, and then you just like drag and drop the stuff into there. And then you can open it on your phone. You can actually open the sound thing on your phone. Now I killed my phone. I don't know what I did. Does it still work? Yeah, it does. Does it still communicate? Yes, it does. Um, that's how you get it to the phone. And then the, the next thing is to like build something like this with Arduino. Uh, anyone here should probably know what an Arduino is, but it's a little computer microcontroller thing. Um, that can talk to a lot of different things. And one of the things it can, it can take input from sensors and then talk to something else. That's what we're doing here. And sort of the second tutorial, in, if you go into like arduino.cc and you like w go through like the easiest tutorials, like the first one is to connect a button and an LED and the second one is to collect the slider. Uh, so that's basically what I've been doing. I've taken like going into the second Arduino tutorial, how to connect slider, and then I connected the sliders. But I connected nine of them because there is like nine inputs here that can take sliders. Uh, sliders, they are quite easy to connect. It's just three things that you can connect. Learn to solder. That's really fun. Uh, you connect the plus and the minus, positive and negative. Uh, VCC, G and D, uh, whatever you want to call it. Make sure you use a lot of colorful things inside because it's good. And uh, make sure to connect it to the Arduino. It's 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 very it's really that simple. Uh, the only thing here is what you want to do. You want to oh, shit. I should. Oh, that's the good thing about things fucking up. It's, it sounds good. Um, you want to have some kind of camera connection kit to your Arduino or to your iPhone. Uh, if you have an Android, that one costs one dollar. If you have an <laughs> if you have an <laughs> iPhone, that one costs twenty dollar. <laughs> Congratulations, Apple users. Uh, but uh, there is also some stuff online you can buy them cheaper, if you dare to. Uh, and of course, you have to put some code actually on Arduino, and that code is extremely simple. It's just this basically. Oh, I'm done. Was that 20 minutes? Yeah. That's great, because this is the last step. You put the code on the Arduino. This is the code. It just says different things here. You know those... <laughs> those uh, 35, 35, you just put them here as well, these numbers. Super simple. The rest of the code you don't have to understand, just these numbers. <laughs> and uh, that's basically it. How to build it. <coughs> And it's so cheap. It's so cheap. This is less than 100 kroner to build. Yeah. What's next? What's next? OK, the reason that I'm here. Do you want to build stuff like this with me? Yay, yay. Uh, basically, I, I just wanted to convince you that it's very simple to do these kind of things, uh, because I think it would be fun in the Stockholm hardware thing to build synthesizers. Yeah. 
Uh, and also I need uh, a motivation or maybe some help to build a nice guide on how to do this because I didn't really have time to do that. And maybe in the sort of the next step it could be possible to create like, because these are really easy to distribute as well. I mean, if you come up with like a nice Arduino patch and everything like this, rip, 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 it's, uh, it's pretty easy to distribute it. And um, if people just want to do the soldering themselves, for instance, or uh, then all sort of the software is easy to distribute. Yeah, I think that was my question <laughs> to you.